Hi, this is Billy Seligana and tonight we spend an amazing evening listening to great men of, of God talking about leadership from a very different perspective. The theme of the conference was 21st Century Leadership and it was an event put together by Moses Gundi. Now here I've got with me a very great son of the soil, a man who's been respected all over the world, who has taken our indigenous and, and native intelligence in inspiring the world of how to think differently, but very grounded in scripture. I'm going to say it very, very grounded in scripture. Good evening, Dr. Masonga, and welcome to a conversation with Billy Selegana. Thanks, uh, Brother Billy, yes, uh, for having me to your show. It's a pleasure. I'm going to just go back to the first thing that you said uh, about leaders. You said leadership is not about the leader, him or herself, but it's about the people. That's Can right. Can elaborate on, on what that means for you? When God called Solomon, uh, King Hiram wrote him an open letter yes. to say these great words to him which I wish all the leaders globally could hear. God loves Israel meaning God loves people. Yes. And because God loves people, that is the reason he calls leaders to lead people. So leadership is not about me as a leader. Leadership is about the people I, I am leading. Yes. Now this places a big responsibility to everyone who calls himself a leader. And you should make the people to be the project throughout your leadership task. Don't push people aside and you make yourself the project. Absolutely. So there is a leadership bankruptcy and a poverty of leadership all over the world. That is the reason why in my research uh, of leadership for the past 25 to 30 years, I came to the conclusion that the greatest need of our world today is Christ-like leaders who will not be corrupt, mm -hmm. who will not uh, misuse people people's resources as well yeah but who will lead people the way god originally wanted people to be led now if you look at the the, the african continent research also says that per square meter africa has got more churches than the rest of the world put together mm -hmm. so we as africans who are very spiritual or religious whatever way that you want to look at it mm -hmm. how come that Africa being so driven by the scripture and having a, a much more intrinsic understanding of the scripture and yet we still find leaders, even from the spiritual realm in churches, we see this, this, this fly-by-night pastors mm -hmm. selling people Vaseline, water, mm -hmm. towels and all these mm -hmm. things. Why is it, even though we're, we've got a very strong foundation, which is Christ and the Bible, we still find Africa being corrupt, we find Africa being uh, in, at war with itself we find Africa's resources being planted by external people and making beneficiation and bringing back to sell to us at four or five times, even a hundred times the, ta the price that they took it. What is it that you think is the challenge of African leaders? Because of the psychological damage uh, done to us by slavery, colonialism, imperialism, poverty, disease, there is this tendency in, in African leaders to misuse power, to misuse gift, to misuse talent, to misuse greatness, to misuse influence. So that is why I believe character is more important than talent and gift. 
Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 remains a standard to me. The fruit of the Spirit. If, if you are a leader without holiness, purity, character, self-discipline, self-control and self-respect, you will always misuse people and misuse talent and also misuse the gift that you've been given here. Yeah. So, uh, I spoke in my address about a motive that is not clean. Mm. If you get into leadership because you are guided by a wrong motive, mm. you will always uh, increase suffering to the people of Africa who have suffered for so many years. So in your own assessment and your experience as a leadership expert, and like you've said, over 30 years, you've been studying the habits and the characters of leaders. What are the three things which you believe we should begin to teach our, the younger generation now so that by the time they take over from us, at least they can breathe in a new way of leading? What are the three fundamentals that you believe we should be teaching from schools, mm -hmm. as we speak now, mm -hmm. so that by the time they get to 21, 22, they're already entrenched in this teaching mm -hmm. that would have given them to make sure that they become better leaders and, and stewards of the resources of the continent. You have already mentioned one thing that is perhaps more important uh, than you can imagine. Mm. We should start very early mm. in, 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 in Sunday school, mm. in preschool, in lower primary, in higher primary, to teach the right definitions, the right values, the right interpretation, the right purpose to life, servanthood, stewardship, love, respect, self-discipline, self-control, and self-respect. And secondly, it is mentorship that is crucially important. Mm. I believe one of the weaknesses, in, 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 in particularly in Africa, our continent, is, is failure to pass on the baton and the torch to the younger generation mm who are the future, of this country, who the are the cream mm. and the flowers of South Africa, Africa and the world. Mm. I am fully convinced that I cannot be a champion of all generations. Mm. And because I am fully convinced that I cannot be a champion of all generations, I started before I turned 30. To, to disciple, to train, and to encourage others to be leaders, mm. even to be better leaders than me. Mm. And unfortunately, many leaders who belong to the old school of thought, mm. we are full of dictatorship. Absolutely. Mm. Autocratic leadership. Mm. Purpose. Mm. We, we, we want to hold on to leadership mm. until we develop arthritis. <laughs> you know? And I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing because if you look at the recent elections that happened in Europe, all the leaders that were elected in Europe are all under 45. Mm. And yet in Africa, we've got leaders that are over 72 that are still holding on to power. Now, unfortunately, the, the followers are becoming much more sophisticated and more educated because of the availability of social media and the internet. Now, if you look at the Arab Spring, when it was this eruption that took out the government by popular demand, if you look at countries in, in SADC, South Africa was one of those countries which we all perceived it to become the beacon of hope for the continent of Africa. And yet, we strangely find ourselves exactly where other African countries were, 
we have leaders that are almost moving very close to dictatorship. Mm -hmm. You know, where one party wants to become the hegemoth and mm -hmm. dictate the life of everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, what is it that you think we have lost? Because Mandela gave us a promise of a or a foundation of a rainbow nation. Mm -hmm. He said we'll all become equal and we'll all strive towards one thing. And then it's not even 15 years that is gone. Already we've seen a tide changing. We're becoming almost like any other African country. In your own message, in one sentence, what is it that you think we as South Africans especially should do to make sure that we don't go the way the rest of the continent is going? Well, number one, we, we should have genuine spiritual experiences. What I call to be a genuine Christian. Mm. You see, Christianity is not churchianity. Mm. We need to be saved. We need to be born again. We need to be new creatures in Christ. Mm. We need to cross from death to life. Mm. We need to be partakers of his divine nature. Mm. And it is only when we have experienced regeneration mm. that these spiritual experiences mm. will influence our definitions, our values, mm. our interpretation, mm. and our purpose to, to life. And when we become leaders, we will experience what I mentioned in my talk. Mm. We will experience a calling mm. you know a call is not necessarily just a job yeah something that is higher than a job yeah. yes it's not just a, a mechanism to enrich yourself to make more money mm. we should take notes from our father nelson mandela mm. from mahatma gandhi mm. from martin luther king mm. from julius nyerere uh, and from other leaders who proved that they are not power drunk, mm. we must develop servanthood, the spirit of a servant, to serve individuals, mm. to serve the family, to serve the church, and to serve society. Mm. Even the church, you will be amazed that even the church is sick. Absolutely, yeah, because if the church was was, was doing what it's supposed to be doing, society wouldn't be as sick as it is. A sick church, mm. a wounded church, mm. will never heal a sick world and mm. a wounded world. Judgment must start in the house of the Lord. Mm. Many, especially some of these emerging prophets who are emerging like, you know, mushrooms mm. all over, mm. you know, they need to ask themselves tough questions. Mm. Is my motive clean? What am I doing this for? Mm. Am I called by God to do what I'm saying I'm doing? To yes. do what I am doing? Mm. Am I after positions? And money and grand Money, mm. you know. Mm. And you can tell by the way they, if they, some of them are crazy for titles. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I am bishop, I am apostle, apostle. Mm. prophet. Mm. No one ever says I am a teacher. Yes. Because teaching involves studies. You Absolutely. Know. And it, it involves it's discipline. Engagement. Yes, yeah. Mm. You know. Mm. So I am very much worried um, over Africa, particularly, yeah. because. I am Afrocentric. I love Africa. Mm. Uh, I could have uh, relocated to the States. I studied there. I, they offered me the best. Mm. But I said I want to go back home yes. to save my people. So in all in all, you're saying for Africa to fix herself, Africa has to repent. We have to be born again. We have, we have to, to experience mm. genuine newness of life true transformation i don't trust religion mm. i don't trust uh, shallow christianity which i call a christianity without christ mm. i don't trust this over emphasis of prosperity materially at the expense of, the of genuine spiritual 
maturity. I believe if we can experience God genuinely, mm. we will develop to be genuine leaders Absolutely. who will have a heart for people, mm. who will be sensitive to the needs of the people like Jesus. Wow. That is why I said I vote for Jesus. Because Jesus is God mm. and he is the same yesterday, today, today and for forever. Mm. No one can ever teach Jesus anything. Mm. It is Jesus who must teach us. Absolutely. And I dislike when people reduce Jesus to the level of, of human leaders, you know. I have mistakes, mm. but not Jesus. Absolutely, he was a perfect one. Yeah. Abraham lied. Moses killed a human being. David committed adultery, mm. and not accidental adultery, organized adultery. Mm. Mm. Peter chopped somebody's ear. Mm. Noah became drunkard. Mm. But you go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will find Jesus to be perfect and consistent. Consistent. Mm. And he never discriminated against anybody. Mm. So that is the Jesus I am following. Mm. And I cannot compromise the gospel because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Doctor. It was a privilege and an honor to be with you. And may God continue to bless you as you go out and transform our nation, which is the continent of Africa, because we don't see ourselves as South Africans. We're part of the whole. Oh, definitely. Part of we are whole. part of the bigger picture absolutely and we are africans and we hope that your words will spring through the whole continent and we'll, we will experience this spiritual transformation and become servant of the people instead of people serving us it has been an honor and a privilege. well thank, thank you, you it, it has been a privilege particularly to be interviewed by you i like your wisdom your maturity your understanding your knowledge uh and the exposure God allowed you, Thank you very to much. know the difference between Africa and, and other countries Thank you. Uh, or nations. So we have great wealth here in, in Africa. Absolutely. In fact, Africa is not poor. It is the African who is poor. Absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. mindset of the African is poor, but yes. the, land is, the land is good place. So all we need, we need more of God than anything else. Amen to that. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, my good doctor. Bless you. God bless you too. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you have seen, we've spent amazing time with this great man of God, great wisdom, very practical in his approach. And I believe that as a viewer, when you're at home, find that inspiration to go back and find the truth. And the truth has always been there. We just have to humble ourselves to the truth, transform our lives, get into a space where we serve instead of wanting to be served. This is Billy Silicon going to say, let's build Africa because like it is said, Africa is rich, but the African is poor. Let's change the mind and the heart of an African so that we can tilt the land to the benefit of everybody. Amen. Amen.